ഫുൾ എ പ്ലസിലേക്കുള്ള വഴി ഇനി തനിയെ തുറക്കാം സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ടു ദ്ലാപ്സ് ചാനൽ റിംഗ് ദ ബെൽ ബട്ടൺ ആൻഡ് ഓപ്പൺ സക്സസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസി ഹായ് ഇൻ ദ പ്രീവിയസ് ക്ലാസ് വി ഹാവ് സീൻ വാട്ട് റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ലൈറ്റ് ഇസ് റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ ഇസ് ദ റീസൺ ബിഹൈൻഡ് ദ ബെൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് ലൈറ്റ് റേ വെൻ ഇറ്റ്സ് പാസസ് ത്രൂ ദ ഇന്റർഫേസ് ഓഫ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് മീഡിയ വി ഹാവ് സീൻ ഹൗ എ ലൈറ്റ് റേ ഡീവിയേറ്റ്സ് വൈൽ കമ്മിങ് ഫ്രം എയർ ടു വാട്ടർ ഹിയർ കംസ് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ Will the deviation of a light ray entering from air to any other media also be a light? Let's do another experiment to find out. Here, you can see a glass lab A, B, C, D. Mark a point Q in A, B and P outside the glass lab and pass the light from a laser torch through P, Q. What do you see here? The light ray undergoes a deviation of path and reaches a point R. on cd the light ray again undergoes a path deviation at r and reaches a point s here the refraction is happening twice let's consider this as two cases in the first case ab is the surface of separation of air and glass that is the first refractive surface q is the point where refraction is happening and a normal is drawn at q pq is the incident ray in the first refraction and qr is the refracted ray angle i is called the angle of incidence which is the angle between incident ray and the normal after refraction the ray gets deviated and makes another angle r the angle of refraction which is the angle between refracted ray and the normal Now, let's measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Are they equal? Which one is larger here? Yes, the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction in the air-glass interface. In the second case, the first medium is glass and the second medium is air. Here, CD is the surface of separation of the two media, that is, the second refracting surface r is the point where refraction is happening and a normal is drawn at r qr the refracted ray in the previous case now has become the incident ray after refraction the ray got deviated and rs is the new refracted ray in the second refraction also we can mark angle of incidence i and the angle of refraction r let's measure the new angle of incidence and the angle of refraction can you find any difference from the previous case which one is larger now yes angle of refraction is greater than angle of incidence in the glass air interface now let's analyze both the refractions together while going from air to glass the refracted ray deviates towards the normal and from the glass to air the refracted ray deviates away from the normal can we relate this to optical density which medium has greater optical density air or glass yes glass has greater optical density so we can clearly say that when a light ray enters a medium with lower optical density to the one with higher optical density the refracted ray deviates towards the normal and when the light ray enters from a medium with higher optical density to the one with lower optical density the refracted ray deviates away from the normal what happens if a ray enters normal to the glass lab let's see what do you observe here yes the ray didn't deviate and continues to travel in the same path that is the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction are zero so we can conclude that when a ray of light incident normal to a surface there is no refraction happening and hence the ray travels undeviated refraction can occur at the interface of any two media which are having different optical densities now let's look at some of the schematic representations of refraction This first figure shows an air water interface 
a light ray is coming from air to water. Since the ray comes obliquely, refraction will happen and the path will deviate. But will the ray deviate towards the normal or away from the normal? Let's see. We know that the optical density of water is greater than that of air, which means the light ray is entering from a medium of lower optical density to a medium of higher optical density. So, the refracted ray will deviate towards the normal. This next figure shows a glass air interface. Here, the light ray is coming from glass to air, which means from a medium of greater optical density to a medium of lower optical density. So, the refracted ray bends away from the normal. In this diagram, you can see a water glass interface. Since the light ray is coming from glass to water, we can see that the light ray is traveling from a medium of higher optical density to a medium of lower optical density. But here the light ray is incidenting normally. So, there is no refraction and the ray travels undeviated. From the previous glass lab experiments, we can find that when the light ray passes through different media, the angle of refraction increases with the angle of incidence. Observe sin i and sin r values and the ratio. We can clearly see that the ratio sin i divided by sin r will be a constant. This ratio is known as the refractive index. Refractive index is indicated by the letter n. The facts we have understood about refraction can be stated as the following laws. These laws are called the laws of refraction. What are they? The angle of incidence, the angle of refraction and the normal at the point of incidence on the surface of separation of the two media will always be in the same plane. And the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction that is sin i divided by sin r will always be a constant. This law is known as Snell's law. As we said earlier, the constant from Snell's law is called the refractive index, which is denoted by the letter n. So, in this session, we have studied refraction in different media, laws of refraction and Snell's law. Refraction of light in different media is a very important topic. Do as many questions as possible and that will help you to understand the concept better. Moon lecture the the learning app.